So what, okay. what, do you, what do you mean by adaptation? What do you... Okay, so an adaptation by definition, at least in the sense that I'm talking about it, is the act of taking a story out of its original medium that it was designed in and putting it into another medium. All right, can you give so, me, can you give me an, an example? example? Yeah, yeah. Uh, an example would be taking a manga and making it an anime or uh, in the same manner yeah. taking like comic book Iron Man and making him live action Iron Man. Right, or like yeah. taking a novel and making uh, a movie like Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Lord right. of the Rings or any any okay. of the above. It really is just um taking one thing out of its original medium and putting it into another medium. Yeah, so and you're I'm not interested in hearing like is there precedent for it? Precedent is there precedent for it? What does that mean? What like is it something people should be doing? Is that what you mean? Or well, so something that strikes me, something that's interesting to me is like, if you remember, uh, I don't know if you grew up with the Harry Potter movies, and I didn't necessarily grow up with them in the theaters all right. too much. Yes, I did spend time like watching them and stuff. But from all, every person I ever talked to was always like, uh, the book was better. And then it's the same thing with like the Hobbit movies. Uh, the book was better. And then Ender's right. Game, oh, the book is better. And right, yeah, no, it's it's a it's a very it common wonder, thing for like people to say that. Are out there? So, it yeah, because so, they're they're all different. The way the the adapt the, the adaptations are all different on different scales. Because I think bringing a novel to Hollywood cinema, like live action, that is a very drastic like interpretation i would say like it's very different which is why i feel like mm. it's so polarizing like people are usually diehards for the movie or for the book and i i, I like and what you were saying is true because i feel like honestly most of the time if someone's read the book they prefer it um most of the time i from what i've seen from friends and everything uh but then there's the people that don't like reading and they're the ones that kind of tend to be more fans of the the movies and stuff but then you have comics and manga which it's weird how comics comics are western and manga is eastern it's a japanese and i would say manga and anime is very much more closely related um like usually the people who work on the anime are the same people who wrote the manga like you st you have the same guy overseeing its creation where n not all the time is the author going to be part of the movie um for like let's say harry potter like i'm sure i i don't know i don't know the production of harry potter and lord of the rings etc i don't know if their authors were involved in any way i have no idea because i know that like stan lee was involved in the mcu stuff um i don't know how big of a role he had to play in it though so it's it's just like this big question but i know that manga and uh anime are very much closely more closely knit together um and then yeah it's just interesting because that's i feel like in my opinion i feel like that's the best adaptation i've seen i don't i can't think of anything off the top of my head that's maybe better because I, I i i uh do you have any other examples besides like necessarily like a book to a well, to a movie or show sure there's i mean there's that kind of adaptation but there is taking a film and adapting it into a new uh, kind of genre or, or a new style of storytelling. So the what I'm kind of alluding to is the notorious live action remakes that Disney makes oh, over and over yeah. and over, almost a nauseum. Which is weird. And it's like I an can't think of yeah. It's an adaptation of itself. I can't think of a right. Well, and it it takes something that's intended to be animated and makes it live action and i can't necessarily think of a live action one that i watched and was like yeah i prefer that over the original okay okay so this were you i don't, I don't want to cut it and cut you off if you were going to finish saying something there no no, no. Okay. I, i'm i'm the ball is now in your court okay i 
I think that you need, you need, I, this kind of goes back to what we were talking about with the, uh, the whole plagiarism thing, like the stealing content where I feel like you need to, there needs to be an, you need to understand why you're making it <laughs> because I think the, the problem with these live action Disney's is that they're uninspired. They are completely like, and, and again, lots of people work on these movies, so I'm not jabbing the individuals that work on the movie, but I'm just talking about like the business decisions. And ultimately when you watch these live actions, you can feel that it's, there's not as much love and passion behind them as the original product. And they're, they're kind of remaking it to either, you know, re get the license to the copyright or so that uh, they can just make some more money off of that IP. Like that's kind of what it feels like at the end of the day. I, I, I think that's the overall consensus. I, I, that doesn't mean it's necessarily true, um, but that's the vibe I get from it as well, personally. So I, I don't know, dude, it's when you look at, let's say Lord of the Rings adaptation, like you can tell that there's love and passion behind it and there's a use for it because not everybody likes to consume books for entertainment. So this is another way to get that story to people. And I feel like it is inspired. There is a goal behind it. It has this like passion driving it. And I can say a similar thing for One Piece going on right now where they have the, you know, they have the manga and then it turned into an anime. The anime has been going on for 20 years and not a lot of people in the West are into that. So they made a Western live action show for One Piece with on Netflix with like live like people that speak English and it's been getting a lot of other people to consume these stories and fall in love with these characters which I say I, I think that's a good thing because I you know it, I, I'm kind of interested in how you feel about the uh that aspect of it where it's like does does it matter if it's quote-unquote worse or different if it's giving if it's getting that story to more people right that would have never consumed the other version of it. Like a lot of people seeing mm -hmm. Harry Potter that wouldn't have read the book kind of a thing. Right. Well, I think that it's, there's some nuance to it that needs to be um, addressed. As you were saying, the intent behind it is, it goes a long way. Uh, if, if you ever look at any behind the scenes of the Harry Potter movies, you can see just how much love and passion that they spent yes. years working on that yeah. that stuff and i do think there is precedent for taking a piece of work and giving it to an audience that doesn't maybe hasn't always had a very easy time getting into that medium yeah uh, as you were talking about like with one piece there's a reason that the live action is doing so well is because it's a good story that's adapted well i think that's yes. kind of another big piece of nuance uh -huh. that needs to be addressed is there's ways to adapt a movie or, or a, a story into a different medium and it doesn't work very well like we have lots of examples of that the avatar movies the airbender movies yes or movie i guess yeah, I mean, because um, yeah, it's notoriously yeah. horrendously awful and bad. And I think the reason is because they tried to tell a story that w wasn't the last airbender and yet still tried to use the last airbender's IP uh, and the legacy that so many people loved. And they just did it horrendously. Yeah, and I think that's a really big thing that I've had. I've taken great not offense, I guess kind of personal offense, but it's really turned me off a lot to watch the MCU do that to a lot of characters that I really care about, or to see the new powers that be of Marvel take the heroes that I appreciated and I adored growing up and change them entirely to what to something that either I don't recognize or I don't appreciate. Yeah, because um, at that point, it's no longer like an adaptation. It's just like looking at a concept and doing your own version of it kind of a thing. Like it's right. I, it's, it, it's kind yeah. of like fan fiction almost is what it registers yeah. to me as. In, in a way, it's yeah. It's just people get paid to do fan fiction. But I don't know. How, how far can you stray from the original source material before it becomes unfaithful? You know? It's, yeah, I mean, that's, I feel like that's a question everybody has to answer for themselves because, you know, uh, 
that is that's a very interesting question because what you get out of something is completely different than what someone else gets out of it and an adaptation might deliver that same thing for them but it doesn't deliver what you liked about it um if that makes sense sure yeah you know so it's it is very interesting and i you know i've learned a lot over the years about you know uh just like how people's tastes are different and uh what like everyone values different things even like so like me and you might both like star wars but we would probably like star wars for different reasons and that's something i i couldn't wrap my head around for the longest time like i think it took it until i was like 16 17 to kind of like finally understand that not everybody liked what i liked for the same reason it was just weird to me um but so that is interesting because like whoever adapts the the media the whatever it is they what they got out of it might be what they're trying to create which the aspect that you liked from it might not be there because maybe that's not what they got out of it when they watched it so they you know what i mean there could be that disconnect um because it's yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's yeah. so hard and to transfer what was in that original creator's brain into a new medium in first place that's that's already insane so yeah it's it's an undertaking that's really tough to get right um it's one of the reasons i brought up iron man is i think iron man is a situation where people took the original source material and somehow elevated it beyond yeah what it originally was in its first medium and i can't think of too many other series that have done it quite to the same degree that iron man has like yeah. Iron Man now is a household name. Everyone knows who Tony Stark is, or mostly everyone. And if you don't, then you've at least heard the name Tony Stark slash Iron Man. Um, yeah, it's that. So that's it, I, you bring up an that interesting wasn't point. The case when the comics were around, that wasn't the case. Yeah, yeah, but you you bring up an interesting point where uh, these these the early MCU people, I, I not all of them, but like especially Iron Man and Captain America. They weren't the the fan favorites of Marvel. Like me, like I, I'm not. I wasn't there when Marvel was new. But from what I've heard, you know, Captain America and Iron Man were very one dimensional. They were very simple characters because they were very. They were like some of the first ones ever made. Um, but like the depth that the MCU adds to these characters is what made people fall in love with them in the MCU. These were things that the the creative liberties that were taken that I think later led to the problems that running into because these characters that are fleshed out in things later on in the MCU, like now that those creative liberties are being attached to them, it's like affecting them negatively. Whereas I feel like Captain America and Iron Man were kind of like these blank slates that when depth was added to them, it just made them these super amazing characters. Um, but you, again, you can also tell that there was, there was a bit more love and passion put into them back then than uh kind of like the nine to five we gotta do the next movie kind of thing yeah going on now well so there's something there's a precedent also at least in the case of the mcu um i don't know if you've ever heard of nerd Roddick, the he's he's a youtuber he he kind of goes ham on like crapping on hollywood kind of and uh. yeah he could be a little abrasive about it but he does have some interesting clips one of the clips like at the beginning of one of his videos showed marvel project after marvel project of just like interview after interview going all the way back to like wandavision and and around then and it's like director and creative writers and all that stuff interview after interview no i never read the comics or no i i didn't identify with the source material or uh, i didn't i didn't i don't know who the character was when i got hired on for this and uh, I didn't grow up with Daredevil or I didn't grow up with Hawkeye or I didn't grow up with Falcon. And it, it makes me feel a little in- confused. Yeah. Because uh-huh. <laughs> when you watch the original Iron Man and you watch the original Captain America, you know that the creators of those things, they were taking risks and they were taking, they were traveling into a, an unknown, relatively unknown territory. Superhero movies at the time weren't, like wildly successful outside of yeah. the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies and Batman, yes. I think. Yeah, uh-huh. um, that, that is correct. But I do think those two characters specifically transcend the art of the superhero. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, it was, timeless legendary characters. I remember, I remember being two or three, well, not two. I was like three or four years old, and I was over at my my childhood friend's house, and we were in his room, uh, arguing about Spider Man versus Batman. And I I had a Spider Man figure, and he had a Batman figure. But it's like, even back then, and to this day, I feel like those two are like, they're the king, they're the they're the superhero kings, you know. Like Superman's iconic, but I just feel like yeah. everybody's favorite is going to be either Spider Man or Batman most of the time, um, for good reason. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. Well, so, but you know, Iron Man and, and Captain America and and those kind of original creations were created by comic book lovers that loved the story and wanted to give it to a new audience, like you were saying. Um, to an, to an audience that maybe didn't always identify with with super or the comics or didn't have money or didn't have time to collect them or whatever reason yeah now they could see them on the screen and and feel those stories i just feel like lately marvel went from such good adaptation with people who really wanted to tell the original story to now trying to tell stories that aren't at all like how they were if that makes sense yeah, well, so like you said about One Piece, the reason why people like it is because the foundation is the same. It's the same story. So of course people are going to like it because it's really well made and thought out and the meaning behind it's really impactful and everything. And so when you, when you look at a story like that and if you were just if you decided no, I I'm just going to use the characters and the the branding and I'm going to do my own thing. That's when it doesn't work, right? Like, uh, you know, it, same thing. Like, any, anything that has filler, right? If you watch an anime with filler, it's this. It's that. It's the same exact thing. It's like you're watching something, but it's like there. You don't. Ha there's not that. Like, the the whole plan. It's not planned out with like that story in mind. Like when people when when writers write a story, like they're specifically trying to convey something. It's like a very specific. You know, so if you're just like, oh, I'm going to make it look and sound like it, but that that without that meaning behind it, it, it falls flat. So it's just weird to me because it's like you guys have it like it, the MCU people have the foundation to make incredible stuff like they're working with some of the coolest IPs of all time. And they're like, no, nah, I'm going to do my own thing, which is funny because that quote is from Spider-Verse, but they, they, they do that and it's. Uh, it just falls flat, dude. I just don't understand, man. I'm still gonna be, I'm gonna be mad about Taskmaster for like the rest of my life, bro. But it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. interesting. It's interesting how Marvel went from some of the best adaptations to some of the worst. And the, the last thing I want to mention here uh, is, I think that the anime adaptations are an interesting thing, like the live action ones specifically. One Piece is doing it the best we've seen. I think there's still room for improvement, of course. But sure. I just, if you like, there are so many adaptations before it that suck. I don't think there's a single one that has been uh, considered full metal on, Attack on Titan equal grounds as Note the, happened. yeah, Death Note, Full Metal, Attack, yeah, Attack on Titan. I think, uh, I heard that the, the Kenshin one was pretty good, Ooh. but that one's like, I heard that Cowboy one's Bebop was awful. Yes, awful. Cause, cause they just leave content out. It's not if because this is what I'm saying is that the the anime stuff, if you're going to adapt it, you have to do it right. You can't rush these stories, which is why I think a lot of people that watch uh, movie, adapta movie adaptations of books, they get upset because there's so much more in the book that the movie could not get to. And some of that content that is cut out is very impactful, or maybe that was their favorite moment, or maybe without that context, this plot point doesn't make any sense. Right. And like, cause again, when the person writes it, they have that vision in mind. So when you're cutting this content out, it really affects it. And while movies can get away with it, if you're trying to add up, adapt a, you know, 60 plus episode show into a 10 episode live action series, it's just not going to happen. You know, you're going to have to cut stuff out and it's not going to leave the same impact. And that's not even talking about if the voice acting or the actors or whatever or the music like that's not even talking about oh, that the CGI. Oh. yeah oh. so 
Anyways, I've that's... seen some of the anime adaptation CGI, and it's it's atrocious. I haven't even watched them, bro. I'm too scared. I'm too scared. I've seen One Piece, right? One Piece is good, but like I'm too scared to watch the other ones, dude. If someone was like, "It's it's amazing," I, I'd go do it. But I've yet to hear anybody give a good word about <laughs> the live action anime adaptations. So maybe we should take a look at them and give reviews. Oh man, maybe, maybe, dude. I, I, I do, I do it for the fans. I, I do it for the fans, dude. I, I do it so you don't have to. Um, kind of a deal. So. Well, our, our, uh, our next train's getting here, so we probably gotta get on that train. But yeah, uh, adaptation is it's pretty interesting. I'm interested to hear other pe- people's thoughts on it. On like, um if there is precedent for it why you would do it why you wouldn't do it that kind of stuff well i i think from what we've discussed here i think that it's totally a good thing but it needs to be done right and it needs to be done with the same passion and care that the original had because you can even look at like games that have been like rebooted or continued by other companies do it right and do it wrong you know crash 4 versus halo 5 you know it's like which I, I yeah anyways i know that there's nuance to all that but it's like you need you need to care about it if you're going to adapt it i think that's just what it comes down to but bringing it to a whole new audience mm-hmm. is totally worth it in my eyes so but yeah good stuff good stuff well uh we gotta hit that train we gotta hit that train